Hi, I'm Dr. C, and this short post is to basically ask a single question and discuss the implications of it. And that question is, should someone consider doing science at GCSE under double award or triple award? And before we actually get into some ideas on how an individual might answer that question, let's look at a few other questions that are linked to this particular decision about double or triple award. Uh, first of all, why is GCSE science so important? Uh, a few quick comments about that particular issue. Uh, first of all, if you study science, uh, it, it basically introduces you to what's called the scientific method. Now, I'm not going to go into this in massive details, but the scientific method is a way of approaching the world such that you are basically sceptical. You learn how to take information and interrogate it, question it. Um, the idea is that you effectively don't believe anything without evidence. Now, although that can seem like it's a little bit pedantic to some people, you just become a little bit irritating to some people. The idea is that if you just look for the evidence all the time and follow the evidence, you're less likely to be fooled or scammed, which is quite useful. It's a life skill. OK, the second thing is scientific literacy. The British government in particular wanted their population to be very scientifically literate. Again, to kind of use the scientific method, but to understand when people use scientific terms so that you could form your own judgments about particular issues rather than just listening and believing somebody else. You would question scientifically. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to look for the evidence, etc. And the third one was economic development of the country in particular. Uh, the British government very strongly feel that you cannot have a country based on the service industry. The engineering base of this country is considered to be very important for the future of the country. And in order to have a population that can support a developing engineering base, uh, we need good engineers. We need good scientists. So science was considered a crucially important subject. Now, triple award was basically the idea that the British government wanted every one of its population to study biology, chemistry and physics to a full GCSE. This was called triple award. You study biology and chemistry and physics, each one of them its own GCSE and you take exams in each one, and you achieve three GCSEs, one for biology, one for chemistry, one for physics. If that's fine, why does double award exist? Okay, double award basically was a solution to a problem uh, associated with the fact that lots and lots and lots of students in the country were not coping well with triple award. Triple award started and a lot of schools after a few years reported that a lot of the students could not cope with three sciences at GCSE. It was just too much for them. So the government was still adamant everybody had to study biology, chemistry and physics. So what they did was the following. They looked at the three GCSEs that were in existence for the sciences. Those rectangles are meant to basically represent the quantity of biology, chemistry and physics that you study in order to achieve a full GCSE. And what they said was, well, let's kind of split it into thirds. And what we'll do is we'll get rid of a third. We're now left with six parts for biology, chemistry and physics, not the original nine. Now, if we've reduced the amount of content by a third for each of biology, chemistry and physics, We've only got two thirds of bio, two thirds of chem, two thirds of physics. Two thirds plus another two thirds plus another two thirds is six thirds. And six thirds is two. Two GCSEs worth of content. So the government said, well, OK, if your students can't cope with the full triple award, then get rid of a third of the content from bio, chem, and physics, and you've got two GCSEs worth of content. And that was called double award. 
So we're left in this situation where if you do all nine parts, that's the three bio, the three chem and the three physics, you're doing what's called triple award and you get three GCSEs. If you're just doing two thirds of each of the content, you're doing what's called double award and you're still doing some biology, some chemistry and some physics. OK, so having said what triple award and what double award is, let's get down to the issues associated with deciding do I do triple or do I do double? A couple of questions. Some students typically ask, do you need to do triple award in order to do A levels or the IB? And the answer is no. Double award is good preparation for A levels, as is triple award. Do you need to do triple award in order to do degrees in a, in a scientific subject? And the answer here is slightly more complicated. Now, I'm not going to give specific examples because they change with time and that sort of messes up the video. So what I am going to say is that in the case of most degrees and certainly any of the degrees that are nothing to do with science and technology, then no, it makes no difference whether you do double or triple award. However, there are quite a few degrees where you do actually need effectively to do triple award. Some degrees, particularly difficult ones to get onto, but not all of them, do require you to do triple award at the moment, but not many. However, here's the real killer. Some degrees don't require triple award, but they do require the full GCSE in a particular science, when that science is particularly important. One of the most crucial ones, I would argue, is veterinary science and medicine. In this country, those particular areas uh, are very, very popular for various reasons, not least of which is money. But if you apply to a university to do a degree in veterinary science or medicine, and you've only got double award, you have a bit of a problem. Because very often the requirements from the university will be that you have to have uh, uh, a full GCSE, in, in one or two particular sciences. There are examples of universities that require you to have the full A-level in chemistry, but if you don't have the full A-level in biology, you have to have at least the full GCSE. Now, you can't have the full GCSE if you've only done double award. Another area is nursing. Very often in nursing, many of the courses require you to have the full GCSE in biology. So, yes, there are some degrees which you can't apply for if you don't have triple award. The general rule is if you intend to take A-levels or the IB and you intend to do them in scientific areas, then you should really, ideally, unless there's a compulsion not to, you should be doing triple award. Certainly, if you intend to be going for a career that is based on science, technology, uh, computing, mathematics, engineering, the, the, the typical STEM areas, then you should be doing triple award. If for no other reason than scientifically it will make you stronger, it will make you look better. And there are various initiatives within the country aimed at the state system in the, in the United Kingdom to provide triple award for the students. If you're in the independent sector, and you're not doing triple award, then by comparison, you won't look so strong. Reasons that you might want to do triple award. You like science. If you like science, you'll be doing three GCSEs worth. That's a lot of science and you should enjoy it. If you're good at science and you don't necessarily love it, but you're good at science and you want three GCSEs rather than two, then that's another reason to do triple award. If you wish to do a science of some form above GCSE, as we mentioned a few moments ago, that's a reason to do triple award. If you wish to keep science or science type degrees and careers open for you in the future, you don't necessarily want to do them, but you don't want to rule them out, then again, that's a reason to do triple award. Um, sometimes if you want to get into a university that's difficult to get into, the, the kind of Russell Group universities, Oxbridge, you know, Warwick, Imperial, Bristol, Manchester, those kind of places, 
they're difficult to get into because of the competition. The, the stronger you look on paper, the better it will be for you. And certainly, triple award science looks stronger than double award science. Okay, reasons to do double award. You don't like science. Science is not in your skill base. It doesn't mean that you hate science, it's just not your thing. Particularly if you have an issue with mathematics, because sometimes the physics part of triple award, of course, has mathematics in it. If these are not playing to your skill base, then maybe you don't want to do triple award. You'll be happy to see the back of it. An alternative is if you don't do triple award and you do double award, it normally frees up the option to do another GCSE. And it might be that your particular strengths lie with the languages or the humanities, and you want to take more of those areas, in which case double award is fine. Final comments. Is triple award harder than double award? Now, this depends on your school, but the reality is not really. Triple award is not harder than double award. It's just that you're doing more of the science. That's all. Now, this has two additional areas worth just very briefly exploring. First of all, how much time are you being given? If you have more time to be taught triple award, which in most schools that's the case, then there's not a time issue. There's not a pace issue at all. If you're trying to do triple award in the same amount of time as double award, then yeah, that's going to be really tough. The pace is going to have to be very high. But for an awful lot of schools, if the students choose to do triple award, they're given extra time. And that extra time effectively means that the pace is the same as double award or possibly even lower, which is all to your benefit. So time wise, triple award is not harder than double award. And very often, it's actually more straightforward. OK, and the second small point is skill base. And this is a very simple idea. Every subject at GCSE that you take will require a set of skills to be taken on board. For example, if you do history, you're going to have to develop the skill of being able to look at different source materials, understand them, try and look for a comparison between them. In, in what ways are they telling the, the, the same story? In what ways are they contradictory to each other? And then you have to come up with an argument as to why you think a particular answer to a question is the way it is. And you have to be able to write that down with good English using the source material that you have available. And those skills are quite elevated and you develop them over time. Now, if you do double award, you will develop skills needed to do science. If you then do an extra subject, suppose, for example, that you decided that you were going to do geography, you have to learn the skills needed to take on geography. So there's a set of skills there needed. However, if you take on triple award, you already have the skills being learned. You're learning them if you were doing double award, you don't have additional skills to learn for triple award. So in that sense, triple award is more straightforward. Now, some students said to me, but but if you look at the syllabus, the syllabus has got all the hard bits in the triple award part in that extra third. And in some cases, that's true. Certainly in physics, if you look at the syllabus and compare double award with triple award, you will see that the tougher parts the really tougher parts seem to be in triple award. However, there are two ways to offset that particular problem. One, in the examinations, those questions don't normally come up. And if they do, they're at a very low level. And two, even if you were given a really, really hard question that required a, a, a cruel piece of science in order to answer it, almost nobody in the country will be able to answer that question. And if a question on an exam paper has almost nobody answering it correctly, it's as if it wasn't there because it doesn't discriminate between people and it's as if the exam paper just didn't have it there. It makes no difference. And by the way, that's exactly the same for a question that everybody can answer. If they asked you a question on an exam that said, what is your name? Um, then everybody would get that mark and it would count 
as if it as if it wasn't there because it isn't discriminating. The only questions that are really important are the ones that some people can get and other people can't get. And the really, really difficult questions don't fall into that category at all. So in general, unless you have a reason to not want to do double award because you dislike the subject or you have another subject, a humanities, a language, for example, that you want to do, then the typical advice would be triple award will serve you well. And don't get put off because you think that for some reason it's going to be harder because the reality is it isn't. I hope that's helped. If you want any more comments made about particular aspects of this, then by all means drop them in the comments and I will reply to them. Take care. Stay safe. See you next time.